Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started in just a minute as we wait for other attendees to join. Uh, just a couple of things before we do get started. Uh, we will have a time for question and answers at the end. There's a question pane on the right-hand side. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, just go ahead and type those in there. My name is Lisa Brady. I'm the marketing manager at Imagine It. And we have Katrina Rodriguez with us here today. She's going to be our presenter for Revit Site Layout and Model Coordination. Katrina, can you click on the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. sure. So our agenda for today is we'll do some quick introductions of Katrina, if you haven't met her before, um, a little bit about this month's topic and what our learning objectives are. And then Katrina will get into the software and do the presentation. And then, of course, as I mentioned, we'll have some time at the end to do some questions. Um, and again, fill that out in the question pane on the right-hand side. Go ahead. So our presenter today is Katrina Rodriguez. She is a senior applications expert, and she's actually had more than 21 years of experience in the AEC industry. She is a licensed architect out of California, and she specializes in commercial and hospitality projects. So she is a Revit Architecture certified professional and one of our Autodesk certified instructors. So she is very well qualified to be doing our presentation today. So this month's topic, we'll be going over Revit site layout and the model coordination. And so these are, this is really about the Revit site layout tools and how to represent your project models, how to also link model coordinates, um, adjust things for Project North and True North, and the software that we're going to be using is Autodesk Revit. So the learning objectives today are listed here. These are the things that we hope you'll be able to take away from the presentation once Katrina's done. Um, you know, use the site layout tools, make adjustments, set up project locations, and of course, link the model coordinates. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Katrina. Katrina, you have the floor. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. Um, let me just switch over here to my other slides. Uh, all right, so just to go into a little bit more detail as far as the topics that I'll be covering in this presentation, um, I'll be starting off with uh, importing. So we'll take a look at how to link in a survey drawing that we may have received from a civil engineer and take that that linked drawing and acquire the coordinates from that, that file. Um, we'll also be looking at the settings for True North versus Project North um, inside of our own uh, Revit project. Um, we'll look at how to take that CAD file and create a topography from it. So ideally, we would get a 3D CAD file that we can then use um, to make our life easier for creating a topography within uh, Revit. Um, however, we'll also talk about the two other methods for, for creating topography if you do not have a CAD link. Um, and then the third topic on here, shared coordinates. So we'll look at how to take that CAD file, acquire the coordinates, and share that across the different um, disciplines that are working on our project who may also be working in the Revit software. Um, and then time permitting, we might also be able to get to some of the other topics on here like site settings, um, uh, which has to do with visibility settings for topography, um, what are some of the tools that we can use to change the way that we view these in, in our Revit project. Um, if we have time, we might also be able to get into some of the other tools that we can use to modify or customize our, our topo surfaces um, for adding, let's say, different materials to it or maybe uh, manipulating the site uh, contours. And then the last topic on here would be adding site components. So things like trees or um, if you had need to add parking components, where do we go um, to get those tools? Okay, so. We're going to start off with um, importing a CAD drawing. So let me just switch over here. Okay, so when it comes to importing, there are certain steps that we need to, to go through to bring in that 3D CAD file. Um, so we use the insert tab and we can either link in a CAD file or we can import a CAD file. Um, we usually recommend linking because that tends 
if that CAD file changes in the future, we can always relink um, the CAD file. So we link the CAD file, and for, as far as the settings, um, we would best practice would you would be to use center to center, and then move that CAD file in the X, Y, and Z direction. Um, rotate it as needed, and then once we have it in the orientation that we want, we want to also pin that CAD file so that we don't accidentally move it. Okay, and then the last step to linking in that, that survey drawing is acquiring the coordinates from the link. So basically we would have the civil drawing that we're receiving from the engineer, and then we're creating our master site and bringing in that civil drawing into the master site. Okay, and then once we've done that, so we've acquired the coordinates, what happens in the, the background is that Revit will set the survey point, um, which is this icon right here, and move it to the world coordinate system from the, the CAD file, and then take the project base point, and that will be similar to the uh, the UCS or the Universal Coordinate System in the CAD file, and then that way we have the we've already acquired the coordinates from our 3D CAD file. Okay, once we've acquired the coordinates. That already sets the true north in our Revit project. And in the different views within our Revit project, we can choose whether we want to view our site using the true north or the project north orientation. Okay, so let me switch over here to Revit. We're going to look at how to link in a 3D CAD file that we may have received from a civil engineer, um, how to acquire the coordinates from that CAD file, and then we'll look at how the setting um, to switch from true north to a project north orientation in the different views. Okay, so let me just switch over here. Okay, so I'm going to start a new project. So I'll just go to the new link and I'm just going to use an architectural template here. Um, you can, if you have an office template, you can use that as well. So I'll just create a project and say, okay. Okay, and then in this file, so I'm first going to switch over to the site view. And then the first step would be to link in the 3D CAD file. So I'm just going to go to the Insert tab, Link Panel, and then I'm going to Link CAD. Okay, and then I'm just going to browse to that file and look at the settings down below. So I do want to see this in 3D. I'm going to leave the current view only unchecked. I'll preserve the colors of the CAD file. I'll bring in all the layers. And ideally, this would be drawn one is to one. So I'll leave this at auto detect and it will automatically convert units. Um, I do not want the correct lines that are slightly off axis checked um, for a site plan um, because the, the lines are probably supposed to be skewed. So we'll leave that unchecked. And then for the positioning, I'm just going to use auto center to center. Um, we just really need to bring the CAD file in. And then once it is in our Revit project, we move it in the X, Y, and Z direction. So I'll just leave it at auto center to center. And then I'm going to place it at level one. Okay, and I'm going to also leave orient to view check. Um, this one doesn't really matter at this point because we are going to rotate the file as well, depending on where we want our project north. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit open. Okay, so I brought the CAD file in. And then the next step would be to move this in the X, Y, and the Z direction. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to use this building here as the, the building project um, for this example. So I'm going to use the move tool and move where I want the project base points. So I'm just going to use this corner of the building and move it to that point right there. Okay, so that moves the X and the Y. And then I'm going to switch to the south elevation. Okay, it could be any one of the elevations. And then what I'm going to do here is depending on what contour the building is sitting on, I'm going to move that contour down to the level one in this file. Um, the other option is if you want the, 
first level of your building at the uh, place, place it above sea level, then you can also move the project base point and change the elevation to whatever that level may be. Okay, in this example, I'm going to move the fourth contour down to the level one. So I'm just going to use the align tool, do that, and let's see, one, two, three, the fourth one. Okay, so I'm, in this example, my building is going to be at 0, 0, 4, level 1. Okay, so once I've moved the Z, Z axis, I'm going to go back to site, and then I'm going to also rotate this CAD file. So I'm going to take it and then use the rotate tool. Okay, move the center of rotation first, and then I'm going to rotate the building so that my project north is oriented that way. Okay, so that is a second step. The third step would be now to acquire the coordinates from the CAD file. So this, what this is going to do is move the survey point to the world coordinate system from the CAD file as defined by the engineer. Okay, so I'm going to go to the Manage tab. And then in the Coordinates dropdown, there is the Acquire Coordinates. So I'm going to pick that and then basically pick the linked file. Okay, and you'll notice here, if I zoom out a little bit, the survey point has moved. Okay, so now that is located in the WS or WCS of the, the CAD file. Okay, so now this is our site. We've already acquired the coordinates. I'm going to switch back to um, the PowerPoint and we're going to talk a little bit about now how to create the topography for this, this site. Um, before I do that, however, you'll notice in the properties palette, the orientation, um, it is set to project north, but we do have the option for true north. So we can do that in any view that we're in, depending on how, how we want the, the site oriented in that that view. So I'm just going to switch it back to Project North here. And then I'm going to save this as a project. Okay, and this one is going to be the master site. All right, so let me switch back here. Okay, now that we have our site linked into our Revit project, um, because it is a 3D CAD file, we can create a topography from this file. Um, there are, however, two other methods that we can use to create topography in Revit. Um, one is through the tool called Place Point. So we can manually place points for our topography and assign an elevation for each of the points that we place. Um, we do have two options for placing points. There is the absolute elevation <clears throat> that we see in this drop down in the, uh, in the interface. Um, what that means is that as we are placing points, whatever elevation we define or assign in this location is a uh, height relative to the internal origin point or your zero zero in in Revit. If we choose the relative to surface option, that means that we are placing the point uh, at a height relative to the actual surface um, itself. Okay, so this would be what we would use if we did not have a 3D CAD file as a starting point. Uh, maybe we have a 2D CAD file uh, where we can pick endpoints of lines um, to place points. Okay, but ideally, if you can get a 3D CAD file, that would make life easier on our end. So that is the first method. The other method is also <clears throat> using another file, um, which is a points file in this case. So we go to the same tool, it's a topo surface tool, and then from the create from import tool in the drop down, there is this specify points file um, option. However, to use this tool, you do need a file also from a surveyor or a civil engineer. Um, that is a CSV or a text file, um, which looks like what you're seeing on the image to the right. So it's a, a series of uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates um, that live in this, this text file or the CSV file. Okay. And then the third method is using 
a 3D CAD file. <clears throat> so once we have a 3D CAD file um, in our Revit, in our master site file, we go to the same topo surface tool, the same create from import tool, and then instead of the specify points, there is a select import instance. So we would use that and then we would pick the 3D CAD file and then it basically already generates our topo surface based on that file with all the points using the endpoints of the lines in the CAD file and the heights as well. Okay, so let me switch here. So I'm going to use the same master site, take that 3D CAD file, and then create a topo surface from that file. So let me switch over here. Okay, so in this file, <clears throat> if I look at this in 3D, okay, you can kind of tell that it is a 3D CAD file right there. So what I'm going to do is create a topo surface from it. So I'm just going to switch to site here and then go to the massing and site tab, okay, to the topo surface tool. Okay, and then here are the three methods. There's a place point, and then in the dropdown for create per, from import, there's the specify points file and then select import instance. In this case, I'm going to use this one, select import instance, and then I'm basically going to pick the CAD file. What it does is bring up a dialog box with all the layers in the CAD file. I'm going to choose the ones that I want this topo surface to be generated from. So here we have a C topo major layer. I'm going to check that one. And then I'm just going to say, okay, and you'll see the points um, generated. Um, and this is not 2D at all. These points already have a height assigned to them based on that, that CAD file. Okay, and then the last step here would be to <clears throat> come up to the ribbon and hit the finish surface uh, tool. Okay, so now I have a 3D topography. If I look at this in the 3D view, that is what it, it looks like right there. So what we can also do in a master site file is if we already know where the building's going and we know what height it's going to be at, we can create what's called the building pad in Revit. So it's the, the pad where the building is going to sit. So I'm going to just switch back over here to the site plan. Okay, and then before I do anything else, I'm going to change the visual style to wireframe so that I can see the CAD file beyond. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is go back to the massing and site tab and use the building pad tool. So I'm going to pick that. It takes me into sketch mode. Um, because I have lines I can pick, I'm just going to use the pick lines tool right here. You have the other shapes as well. And then I'm going to just hover, select, hit tab, and select that chain of lines. Once I have my closed loop, I'll hit the green check mark. Okay, and then I have the building pad. So in 3D, that is what it would look like right there. Okay, so now I have the topography set up, I have my building pad, um, and so now we can move on to the, the next step. Um, which is setting up the, the project uh, file. So I'm just going to save this. Okay, let me switch back here. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have the master site, okay, which are, we've gone through these two steps here on the left side. The next step is to create a Revit uh, project file for the actual building itself. So in this example, it's the architectural file. When we create that file, we go through similar steps. So we link in the master site into that architectural file. We position it in the X, Y, and Z direction. And then we also rotate it as needed um, to our project north. Once we do that, we pin the file and then we acquire the coordinates from that master site file. Okay, and then similarly, if you have consultants on your project that are also working in Revit, they would at some point then take your file, the architectural file, 
link it into their own Revit project file and go through the same three steps that you're seeing here. So we would do that for all disciplines. Once we have gone through those steps, okay, then we can exchange files and then we would link in the other disciplines into our own file using the shared coordinates um, option okay, for linking. Okay, so that would be if we are working with other disciplines. Um, the acquire shared coordinate system would be the ideal uh, setting. We do also have a publish option here. However, the publish option, if I switch over to the next slide, this really only works well when you are just working internally on your office network. But if you're dealing with consult consultant files, um, the only issue with using the publish is that once that that file changes, um, those will be lost when you receive the, the updated file. Okay, so ideally we would use acquire coordinates if we are working with other um, disciplines that might be in another office. Okay, so I'm going to um, go switch back to Revit and then look at how to link in that master site file um, to a Revit project acquire the coordinates from that site file, and then we'll look at the different views so that um, we can see that or confirm that the true north and the project north are set. Um, and then we will have our project base file. So let me switch to Revit here. Okay, and I'm just going to close out of this file. So this file is good. Um, I'm also forgot to pin this. I'm just going to pin that file right there. Let me save and then I'm going to close this file. Okay, and so now I'm going to create a new file, this time for the architectural project. So I'll start with an architectural template. Um, and as far as the other disciplines, it would be the same steps, um, except that they would be linking in the architectural file. So I'll go to architectural template, project, and then OK. OK, and then I'm going to switch to the site view again, where we see the two points, the project base point and the survey point. And then here I'm going to link in the master site. OK, so I'm going to insert tab, OK, link. And this time I am linking in the Revit file. And then I'm just going to look for the master site. Auto center to center is fine um, because we are going to move this link where we want it once, it it's, once it's inside our project file. And then I'll go ahead and hit open. Okay, so because in the master site, I already moved the building where I wanted it. In this case, I don't really have to do anything. It already lined it up with the project base point in this new building file. So I don't really have to move X, Y, and Z, or X and Y in this view right here. Um, and I've already rotated it, which is good. Now, if I switch to the elevation, just to double check, the building pad is already at my level one. Okay, so that's good as well. So let me switch back to site. Um, and now the third step would be to acquire the coordinates. So I'm just going to go up to the manage tab to the coordinates drop down and then select acquire coordinates. Okay, and then in this case, I'm picking this Revit link. Okay, so if I did this correctly, I would see the survey point move to the world coordinate system of the CAD file that I used originally. So now in this file, I've already acquired the coordinates. Okay, so as a building project, what I can do here now is I can start working on this project. So I'm just going to add some walls here. Let me go to architecture tab, wall tool. Um, I'll just use pick lines right here, go up to level two. I'll use finish face exterior for the location line, and I'll just use a generic eight inch wall. Okay, and then I'm just going to add some walls here. 
Okay, hover tab select did not seem to work. So let me just add these walls. Okay, and then now if I look at this in 3D, okay, have something like that. So I'm going to now save this file as the architectural project. Okay, and then hit save. Okay, so similarly in this project, if I switch over to one of the plan views, there's also a setting for the orientation. So I can switch this depending on what, how I want it oriented in the different views in the project. So for a site plan, you might want to use True North, but for the actual views that are going on sheets, where we want the building oriented Project North, we can leave that orientation as Project North. Okay, so let me switch back here. Okay, so some other site settings. Once we have our topography, we can now start to modify the way that we um, see it. So as far as visibility settings in a view. Okay, so one tool that we can use is when you're looking at the, the ribbon, um, anytime we see an arrow um, for the panel name, that usually means that it will take us to another uh, dialog box or a flyout with some other settings that we can look at. Um, for the model site panel, it takes us to this dialog box where we can, we have settings that we can use to modify how we view the contours of the site. Um, so we can modify, for example, the spacing of the contours um, that we want to see. Um, we can also assign a material. Um, so if we cut a section through that site, what material are we seeing and how far down from the site we see that material. Okay, so that is this setting right here. We can also adjust the visual style settings um, either on a global level um, for the site through the manage tab object styles tool um, or in a specific view we can modify it in visibility graphics so we have two places in object styles and in visibility graphics that we can uh, modify line weight line color and line pattern and that is a category for site um, where we have several subcategories. Uh, we also have the category for topography where we have another set of uh, subcategories. So either for topography, site, or if there are subcategories, we can change line weight, line color, and line pattern. Okay, and then another <clears throat> tool that we can use for topography is the property line tool. Um, we have two different ways that we can create the property lines for our site. One is through um, this dialog box here where we can input the, the bearings for the, the property line. Um, although this can be tedious at times if you have a more complicated kind of shape of uh, a site. Um, if we can also, if we have a CAD file already as a background and it has a property line on there, we can use the property line tool and sketch out the property line. Okay, so we can pick the property lines from the CAD file and that will create our uh, property line on the topo surface. Okay, so um, the, the nice thing about this method here is that it does rotate when we change the orientation of the view to either True North or to Project North. Okay, so let me switch back here. Okay, so we'll look at the different site settings. Um, we will take a look at how to add a property line by sketching um, and also maybe how to add setback lines also by sketching and how to override the graphic of that setback line so that it shows up differently from the property line. Um, we'll also look at how to tag um, the property line as needed. Okay, and look at how to switch it if we want to see bearings and distances as well. So let me switch here. <clears throat> okay, 
All right, so here I am still in the building project. Okay, and I'm going to change this to a wireframe so that I can um, actually, I want to add it in the site plan so that it shows up in all the files. So let me close out of this one here. Uh, yes. Okay, so let me open up the master site. Okay, and then in this file, so this is where we do have the CAD file. So I'm going to switch over to the site plan. Okay, and then I'm just going to zoom in and you'll notice here that there is a property line around this building. So I'm going to use that property line to create my uh, Revit property line. Um, so that tool, if I go to the massing and site tab is this one right here. So in the modify site panel, we have a property line tool. Okay, I'll go ahead and select that. And this is where we have the option to either enter the distances and bearings if you have those values, or we can also create the property lines by sketching. Um, in this case, we're going to use a second method because we already have the lines from the CAD file. So I'll do that. It switches to sketch mode. I have the drawing tools at the top, including this pick lines tool. So I'm going to use that one. Um, with a zero offset, and then I'm going to hover over the property line, hit tab, and then assuming that it's a clean chain of lines, I can pick those uh, lines, okay, and then hit the green check mark at the top. Okay, so it's a little hard to see here, but you'll see when I hover over it, okay, the property line is there, okay, and we'll see it better when I switch this over to hidden line. Okay, but for now we have the property line. For the setback, we can use the same tool. So I'll go back to um, the massing and site tab, go back to property line, okay, by sketching. Okay, I'll use the pick lines tool and then maybe the offset I want to be five feet right there. Okay, I'll hover over the same property line. Okay, and then I'll create my setbacks. Okay, so sometimes the hover tab select doesn't work, so I'll just do that. Okay, I do need a closed loop as well. Once I have that, I would hit the green check mark, and then I have my setback. The line style right now is the same, but we can override it if we want. Um, so if I select this setback line right here, I can right click and override the graphics for it by element and then switch it out with a different line style. Okay. Okay, so now we have the property line and the setback. I'm going to switch this to hidden line right here so that we can see it a little bit better. Okay, now that we have the property line, we can tag this if we want. So I'll go ahead and switch to the annotate tab, tag panel, and use the tag by category tool. Okay. Now when I hover over the property line and pick it, so here I can um, see that I don't have one loaded, so I'm just going to load a tag for the property line takes me to the out-of-the-box library. Okay, let me go to annotations. Um, this one is probably under civil. Okay, and then there is a property, uh, property line tag right there. So I'll go ahead and select that and then open. And then I'll tag that property line right there. So I can tag all four in this case and do something like that. Okay, so that is a property tag. We do have some other tools for using on a topography. So back in the massing and site tab, um, we have this label contours tool. So if I click on that, 
what that does is now if I pick, let's say, one point here, and then I pick a second point just somewhere here, okay, you'll see that it adds the elevations. Okay, right now with the main uh, con or the primary contour lines every 10 feet, and then you have secondary contours at every one foot um, increments. <clears throat> so that is a default, but that is editable, or we can modify it through the model and site panel. So here, anytime we see an arrow like this, that means that we can get to another <clears throat> either a flyout or a dialog box. So I'll go ahead and select that. <clears throat> and what that does is open up this dialog box right here. Okay, so on here, this setting, okay, this is what defines the primary contour. So right now we're seeing it at every 10 foot um, intervals. And then the additional contours is what this box is for right here, this table. Um, and here I can see that the increment for the secondary contours is one uh, foot. Okay, if I want to change that, maybe I don't want one foot, maybe I want it every two feet, I can change the increment right there, hit apply, and then you'll see the site update. Okay, so that is adjusting the contour lines depending on um, what intervals or increments you want to use. There's also a section on here for the section cut material. Um, so we can choose what uh, fill pattern uh, we want to see when we cut a section through the site. Okay, and the default is set to earth. Um, and then we can also assign the elevation or how, how far down from the site um, we see this cut material. So default is negative 10 feet, but we, that's also um, editable right there. So I'll leave that at earth and 10 feet, and then I'll just say, okay. Okay, so before I take a section through here, once we've placed the, the elevation uh, the, for the contours, we can always come back and modify this. So we can pick the the grip dots at the end and we can move it as needed depending on how we want to see it on the site. If we want to extend it, we can also extend it um, if we want to go a, a little bit farther, okay, as you're seeing there. Okay, so that is um, adding the site contours, okay, and the tags. Let me just save here. Okay, and then I'm just going to switch here. Okay, and we're, we have some other tools that we can use for topo surfaces. So in the massing and site tab, um, we have what's called a graded region tool. <clears throat> what this does is um, allow us to modify the topo surface um, or a copy of it. Um, and cut and fill that topo surface basically. Um, and then that cut and fill that we do with the topo surface can then get scheduled um, in our Revit project. Um, so it keeps track of the cubic feet for the cut and the, the fill. Um, and then we can do total counts for that as well. Okay, another tool that we can use um, for topo surface is the uh, split surface tool. So this one we can use if we want to split or separate the topo surface into different regions and then apply different materials to those regions. So in the image that you're seeing on the right side, the topo surface has been split so that a different material could be assigned to the parking area, for example. Okay. That is one of the uh, splitting tools. There's also a subregion. This one here is similar. We do separate out the topo surface into regions, um, but the, the regions created using this tool do mold to the site contour, so it follows the contour. Unlike the other one where it is uh, basically a, a surface at a level height. Okay, so that is a subregion. And then we earlier we looked at the building pad. So the building pad we can use to automatically cut and fill where our building is going to be sitting on the site. Um, with a building pad, it's similar to a, 
uh, floor object, um, but it does have the, that feature of already automatically cutting and, and filling. Okay, so that is a building pad tool. And then we can also, if needed, use the place point tool, come back and use this tool um, to add points um, if needed to our site, if we need to come back and modify it. Okay, so let me switch here back to Revit and let me just do a time check here. Okay, we have a little bit more time. Okay, so I'm just going to use this same file right here. And let me switch to a 3D view first. So just looking at this site, if we want to assign a material to a topo surface, we can select it. In the properties palette, there is this material property. So I can pick that field, pick the more options icon right here. And it takes me to the uh, material browser. So this is where we can pick what pro what material from this project to use. So let's say I'm just going to do, let's see if there's any grass. No grass. Let me do earth. Okay. So I'm going to use the earth material here and then hit OK. To see it, I'm just going to change the visual style to shaded. And then now we see the earth material. Okay, if we want to now divide or split this topo surface so that we can assign a different material to maybe the parking area um, of this building, we have this split surface tool here that we can use to split this surface. So I'm going to just pick the tool, pick the surface. It takes me into sketch mode and then I can draw so I can either do it here or I can do it in a plan view. It doesn't really uh, matter. We can now kind of sketch in 3D view. So I'm just going to add that area right there and then hit the green check mark. So what it does is that it keeps the topo surface as one topo surface, but now I can select that split surface separately and I can assign it a different material. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the properties palette and switch this out with, um, let's say concrete. So I'll do a search at the top for concrete and I'll just do a cast in place and then okay. Okay, so now it's still part of the topo surface but it's a different material from the, the main topo surface. Okay, so that is a parking area there. We have some other tools up at the top there is this, uh, if we need to merge surfaces later on, we can merge the surfaces. Um, one thing to note about this is whatever we pick first is the material that the uh, next split face that we pick is going to end up being. So just to kind of show you that, if I pick merge surfaces and I pick this main topo surface and then pick this region right there, it merged it and it used the material from the surface that I picked first. So I'm just going to undo that. <clears throat> okay, and then the other tool here is a subregion. Um, this acts differently from the split surface. So if I go to um, subregion here, it takes me into uh, sketch mode as well. So here I'm just going to draw another rectangle in this area. hit the green check mark and you'll see it's also a, a region in the topo surface. However, for this one, okay, I can assign a material to it as well. Let me go to concrete, I'll do that. Okay, and I'm just going to rotate a bit. Okay, you'll see this one right here. Okay, it's following the topo surface. If I move this one right here, you'll see that that one does not, okay, it stays at the same level. So depending on what you're trying to do, you would use either split surface or you would use the regions if you want that surface to follow the topo surface in case you need to move it later on. 
case. I'm just going to undo that. Um, and then we can add site components. So if we need to add trees, for example, or parking components, we have these tools right here. I'll go ahead and hit site component and I'll just pick one of the trees here. Okay, and then add it to the site. You'll see that it does uh, get hosted in the site. Okay, if needed. And then if I go back and I use the parking component tool, okay, I can pick a, a, a type for parking space and then I can place this here. Okay, so depending on the design. So you could add the parking components and you could add other site components, trees, people, cars, and other entourage uh, components. Okay, so let me save that. And let me switch back here. Okay, and so that was actually this slide right here. So we use the site component tool and then the parking component tool as well for laying out the, the parking. Okay, so let me just do a time check here. Okay, so we got through pretty much all the topics. Um, so just to do a quick review here, um, we looked at importing a 3D CAD drawing, um, acquiring the coordinates from that file, um, looking at how to set the true north and the project north um, in the different views in our project, um, how to create a topography using the, the CAD links as well as the other two methods, um, placing points and using a, a points file. Um, and then looked at how to um, set up the shared coordinate system. So let me actually switch back here. So just to kind of take this back full circle, in the master site, if I now want to link in that architectural model, I would go to um, insert tab, uh, link panel, link Revit. Okay, and then because the coordinates were set up, in the positioning, I would use by shared coordinates, and then I would hit open. Okay, and you'll see how that file lands right at the building pad right there. Okay. Okay, and then we also looked at the site setting. So the uh, setting up the, the intervals for the contours, the property line, the setback, and tagging those as well. Um, the, the other tools for editing the topo surface and then the tools for adding in other uh, site components. Okay, so that is pretty much our uh, topics for today. Um, Thank you, let, that was mm -hmm. fantastic. So we can move on to some questions now. We have quite a few actually. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is, can this be done if we, the electrical, already have the building model set up from the architect before receiving the site drawing or Revit, or do we just move the site model and drawing to match the building, which is what he would normally do? Yes, that's correct. So what you can start your building project, you would already start modeling um, where you want your building with respect to your project base point in your file. Um, and then once you receive the architectural file or the civil drawing, you would link that in, move it to where you want it in your project file uh, in the X, Y, and Z, and then acquire the coordinates and that will set up the shared coordinate system. Yes. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and then we have our next question, which is what happens if the civil engineer moves the building on the site after the models are created? Yes, so that would be a, a longer discussion, but ideally once we have the civil file and we've acquired coordinates and we've already exchanged models with disciplines, um, none of that should be changing. Um, if you do get an updated file, you have to go through the same process. Um, it's hard, it, there, there is no way to kind of track or work your way back to setting okay. that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and does this require certain year vi versions of Revit or Civil 3D? Um, no versions as far as the, the CAD file. Um, as far as Revit, I know this goes back at least as far as 2017. 
um, in terms of the bringing in a 3D CAD and using the Topo tool for that. Okay, so if you had, for instance, 2017, and you had a, I don't know, 2014 CAD file, you'd be able to bring that in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is to answer a question that we had. Yes, this this is recorded, and we will make this presentation available. Mm -hmm. to everyone. Um, and then one last question we have, can you place a fence and follow the topo surface? Yes, you can. And that was a feature that was added in 2017, I believe. Um, so let me see here. I'll just do a railing here, for example. So let me do something like that. Okay, and I can pick the railing and I can pick a host right here pick the site, and now that railing follows the site. So it would be the same concept for fencing. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me see if we have any other questions. Yes, we do. Um, can you get topo information or CAD file from Google Earth or another service? And if so, which ones? And this is to do a topo building drawing for a client proposal. Mm -hmm. um, so the... The answer there is it would depend on what the file type is that you can get from those uh, services. So if it's a file type that is that we're able to insert or import into Revit, then yes. So it would more than likely have to be some type of either DXF or D mm. DWG. Right. Mm -hmm. Couldn't use like a GIS. Or Right, correct. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it may be that they can um, take that GIS file and convert it to a okay. file type that can be brought into Revit, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, let me see if we have any other ones. I don't see any other questions, but I'll give it a minute and see if anybody else has anything to type. But as I mentioned, we will make this recording available. And uh, that will be on our go-to stage as well as YouTube. So two places, just in case your company doesn't allow you to get to YouTube, you still have the option of viewing the recording on GoToMeeting. Um, doesn't look like we have any more, so I believe we can conclude. So I want to thank you very much, Katrina, for the very engaging presentation. Thank and you. And to everyone else, have a wonderful day.